everybody. Today I am going to show you my personal favorite machine in the shop, which is the bandsaw. How does the bandsaw get its name? Well, if I open up these two doors right here, you're going to notice I have two wheels in here, and this is what is moving our blade. All right, the blade is in the shape of a band, like a great big rubber band. All right, so if I move these wheels, my blade cuts in a downward motion. I have my upper wheel and my lower wheel. My lower wheel is the one that is powered by the motor, which is moving the upper wheel as well. All right, so it just cuts in a downward motion, making sure that we have a nice flat surface for our material to sit on, because again, cutting in a downward motion. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these. A couple things that we need to make sure before we start our project and what we're gonna be cutting is to make sure we have the right supplies. There's many different things. For sure, for sure, everybody's gonna need this. This is a push stick. This is something that will save your fingers. It looks like a scrap piece of wood, but it will save your fingers in the long run. We also have another item that we could use. This is called a miter gauge. A miter gauge could help cut perfect angles. We could set angles um, as we push our material through. Sometimes you need this, sometimes you don't. But just so you know, this is called a miter gauge. Another thing that we have is what's called a fence. This fence rests on here and can slide and makes it real easy if I wanted to rip completely the same width boards through our bandsaw. We're not going to use this in the demonstration, but this again is called a fence. Now, when I walk up to a machine, I want to number one, check, is it running? If it is, make sure it's turned off before you make any of your adjustments. The second thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that I set my blade guard above my material that I'm cutting to be one fourth of an inch above my material. So how do I check that? I'm simply going to take my material, set it next to the blade, and then I want this to be about one fourth of an inch. We call it a finger test. Basically, take your little pinky. If I can fit my finger underneath there, the blade can cut my finger off. So what I need to do is I need to adjust my upper guard. On this machine, we have a little lock that is in the back here. Okay, there's lots of little knobs all over the place. We have one back here. I want to loosen this up, and then I'm simply going to crank on here and this is raising it. So obviously it's more than a quarter of an inch. I need to lower it back down to a quarter of an inch so my material can slide freely, but my fingers don't. And then I'm gonna lock it in place. On the bandsaw right next to us that we have, same thing, we have a lock right here on the back. You would just loosen this up, adjust your guide post right here, and then you would set it, all right? So now that I have my material one fourth of an inch, I have to start thinking about my cut. How am I going to do this? Um, when I'm cutting, you should be standing right in front. You should have nobody else in your safety zone. Safety zone is an arm's length away. You should be able to put your arms out like this and not talk to or touch anybody. Friends like to come and gather right here on the right hand side. We don't want that because if the blade happens to break, more than likely it would hit the edge of our table and come out to the right hand side. So never, ever, ever stand on the right side of the blade, all right? Only one person should be in this safety zone, okay? You don't want anybody bumping into you on accident or stuff like that. So again, one person per safety zone, nobody should be on the right-hand side. When you're cutting, let the blade do the cutting. Don't force your material in there. You have to realize blades get dull over time, so if it's not cutting properly, make sure you tell the teacher we can exchange or change out the blade for you. Never force or push your work into the blade. We also want to make sure that the machine is working properly when you turn it on or off. If it's not, if you hear some kind of weird noise or screeching or something like that, turn off the machine, tell the teacher right away. We will come over here and we will look at it. Might just be a little piece of wood that's jammed down inside. Um, you know, maybe the blade is a little bit too loose. If it's not working properly, let the instructor know. Um, when we are cutting, Band saws are great for cutting straight lines and for cutting irregular shapes. When you cut an irregular shape though, you need to make sure you have something that's called a relief cut. Say I wanted to cut a curve like this. Some people are like, ah, the teacher's not looking, let's just cut it out. Well, you need to make what's called relief cuts. You wanna make relief cuts about, depending upon how curved your piece is, about every half inch to every one inch on here. When you cut, you can cut straight in and pull back out. Never, ever, ever back out of a curved cut. 
If you have the machine running and you back out of a curved cut, it's going to pull that blade off of the wheels that we had just showed you at the beginning. So make sure you never ever back out of a curved cut. All right? If you get stuck, the best thing to do is turn off the machine, wait for it to stop, and then have the teacher help pull it out of the curved cut for you. All right. Um, when I'm cutting, I never want to have my hands in line with the blade. What happens? Maybe you accidentally slip. Can't tell you how many kids have cut their little thumb right here because they're pushing something through. The hand slips and touch the blade. Make sure you have your hands on the opposite side, never in line with the blade. All right, always on the side, never in line. Um, when you're cutting, never reach around the machine. You don't know if something could get, could get sucked in. So always make sure that you turn the machine off, wait for it to stop, then you can go around to the back to get your piece that you need. All right, we need to wait. All right, go ahead and do a nice little demo, making sure I have a push stick available when I need it. Safety glasses, hair back, turn on the machine, wait for it to come to full speed, so give it about three seconds. Simply cut in, pull out. Notice I'm not forcing it, I'm letting the blade do the cutting. And when I cut, I always want to make sure I'm cutting to the outside of the line I desire. Now, my hands were on the side. Right here, if I start to cut, they're in line with the blade. Use your push stick for this. Go ahead and start cutting. Cut to the outside of your line. The reason you want to do that If I cut to the outside of my line and I have little uh, indents from where I had the relief cuts, I can take this over to the sander now and smooth that out and I will, won't make my project smaller than it needs to be. So when you are done, make sure you turn the machine off, wait for it to stop. Notice there's little pieces under there. Never, ever, ever try and touch underneath there. All right, wait for it to stop. Then you can pull those pieces out. All right, make sure you clean up your area for the next person. If you have any questions, please ask your instructor. We're here to help. Thanks.